So when we talked about the gambler's ruin problem, we calculated a ruin probability. And the ruin probability was the probability that the Markov chain described in the gambler's ruin process ever got to zero, because zero was where Alice had run out of money and had ruined. So we could say that that was the probability that the chain ever hit zero. We also looked at the expected duration of the gambler's ruin problem. And that was the expected amount of time until the Markov chain hit either zero or M, because zero is Alice run out of money and M is Bob run out of money. So we could look at these more generally for other Markov chains. We could pick a state or maybe some collection of states and say, what's the probability that the Markov chain ever hits those states? And if it does, we could ask, what's the expected amount of time until it hits that state or that collection of states? Now, those are hitting probabilities and expected hitting times. So let's start by giving a formal mathematical definition of what that means. OK, so here's that definition written out in maths. It's quite long, but it's, it's not as painful as it seems. So the first thing we've got is H of capital A is the time it takes to hit some set of states A. Uh, normally the case that we're interested in is that we're just interested about the time to hit a single state J, in which case we have that definition, but just in case we sometimes want the bigger definition of hitting a whole group of states. And so we're just saying it's the minimum time such that Xn is equal to A, or it's the minimum time such that Xn equals J. And uh, if we never hit it, let's just say it's infinity, but it doesn't really matter. And so the hitting probability down here is just the probability that we do hit it, as in the probability it happens for some n, or if we want to write it out smartly, it's the probability that that capital H of A we wrote down above is finite, given that we start from I. So HIA is the probability we hit the set A starting from I, and then we also have the expected hitting time, which is the expected value of that time until we hit I. So how long do we expect it to take? Obviously, if HIA isn't 1, then E to IA is infinite, and vice versa. Only if HI of A is 1 can E to IA be finite, because if we might not ever hit the states in A, and the expected time till it happens is, is certainly infinite. So anyway, that, that's quite a, a long definition, but basically the only things we have to remember are Hij is the hitting probability of j from i, as in starting from i, what's the probability you hit j, and eta ij is expected hitting time of j from i. Those are really all we have to remember, and that definition up here was just writing that out in, in, in proper maths terms. So, how do we calculate expected hitting times and hitting probabilities? Well, the good news is that you already know how to do this, because we did it for the gambler's ruin problem, right? We set up equations for the ruin probability, or the expected duration of the game, by conditioning on the first step, and then we solve those equations. In the case of the gambler's ruin, it, we got a linear difference equation. Here we normally get just plain old simultaneous equations, but the method is the same. So let's just do an example to see if we can do it. Now here's an example here. Consider a Markov chain with this transition matrix. Calculate the probability the chain is absorbed at state 2 when starting from state 1. So that's asking for h. 1, 2, right, the probability of hitting state 2, which you'll notice from this row, is an absorbing state, as is state 4, in fact. States 2 and 4 are both absorbing states, you'll remember that from the last section. So what's the probability that we get absorbed at state 2, given we start from 1, that's H1, 2? And so what are we going to do? We can condition on the first step. So we might go from 1 to 1, that happens with probability of fifth. Then, by the Markov property, it's like we're starting again from state 1. And so the hitting time is H12. It might be that we go from 1 to 2. That also happens with probability of fifth. And once we're there, it's like we're starting again from state 2. 
over state 2, 2. Again, with probability of fifth, we might go to state 3, in which case the hitting time will be H3, 2 by the Markov property. Or we might go to state 4 with probability 2 fifths, in which case we have a hitting time H4, 2 by the Markov property to get back to 2. Okay, so that's an equation for H1, 2. But that's also got an H2, 2, and H3, 2, and an H4, 2 in. So we better put down equations for those as well in order to be able to solve this equation. So what can we say about those? Well, H2, 2, what's the probability we hit 2 given we're at 2? Well, we're already there, aren't we? So that, that, that's certain. So H2, 2 is 1. Uh, H4, 2, we can also do straight away. Because H4, 2, we saw from uh, up here, is an absorbing state. So once we hit 4, we stay at 4 forever. So given that we start at 4, the probability we hit 2 is 0 because uh, we're absorbed at 4. And for H3, 2, uh, we're just going to have to do another conditioning on the first step, aren't we? So H3, 2, uh, there's no probability we go to 1. I'm looking at the uh, third row here. There's no probability we go to 1. It's probability half, we go to 2, in which case hitting probability is H2, 2. There's no probability we stay at 3. There's probability a half, we go to 4. We get H4, 2. Actually, uh, we know some of those terms already, don't we? We said that H2, 2 was equal to 1. We said that H4, 2 was equal to 0. So, so, so all that is just a half. H3, 2 equals a half. So we have H22, H42, H32, so we can put them all in up there in our equation for H12, can't we? We get H12 equals a fifth H12 plus a fifth H22. H22 is 1, so that's just for fifth. Plus a fifth H32. H32 is a half, so that becomes a tenth. And two fifths H42, but H42 is 0, so there's no term there. So that's equal to a one fifth. H12 plus 3 tenths. Uh, so we've got H12 equals a fifth H12 plus 3 tenths, uh, which means that 4 fifths H12 equals 3 tenths. 4 fifths is 8 tenths. Uh, so H12 equals 3 eighths is the answer. So it was just condition on the first step to find equations, solve those simultaneous equations. So just to write that out, to find Hij, we set up equations for all the hitting times to J, where that's all the kind of Hkj from anything from J, not just the Hij we want, but all the other ones as well. Uh, and we got those equations by conditioning on the first step, because that's the only thing we know how to do in this course. Everything comes down to conditioning on the first step. And then solve the equations. They're normally simultaneous equations. So that's the process. So I recommend that when you do these problems, you just... Follow it through as I did then, which was you condition on the first step, you write down some equations, you see if there's any you can work out easily, then you solve your equations. But if you did want a general formula, I guess we can work out what that should be, although I don't really recommend using it. I guess the general formula for an HIA, let's put in the full, a full set there. So one thing we said was that if you're already there, so if I is in A, well, you're already there, so the hitting probability is 1. As if you're not already there, if I is not in A, you're going to have to condition on the first step. So you sum over all the possible first steps J, which has probability Pij, and then it's the hitting time from J to A. So that is the general formula, but I don't recommend that you either learn that or use it. I recommend that you use the process we did in this example. Um, I did want to mention one fact that we're not going to prove here, but it, it is sometimes a useful fact, and it will be useful later this section is. Uh, if this equation above has multiple solutions, 
obviously in our example we were lucky we only had one possible solution but sometimes you can come up with funny cases where you get multiple solutions and if that does happen to happen uh, it turns out you want the smallest non-negative one just so this often happens if you get if you have like infinite markov chains sometimes you might have multiple solutions and there's this rule that tells you uh, which one to take uh, so we did hitting probabilities i guess we ought to do a, a example for expected hitting times as well although uh, it's uh, very much the same idea of conditioning on the first step and getting some equations so this equation says uh, condition consider this markov chain which you might remember from section six when we did the actuarial science problems uh, you might remember that. Given that we start in state one, what's the expected time until we reach state three? So that's asking for eta one three, isn't it? So what are we going to do? We're going to get equations by conditioning on the first step. So remember, when we're dealing with expected times, you have to count the step you're doing now because that takes one time period, right? So it's one plus the time that we have now, uh, and then with probably it's a quarter we stay at state one, so we still have an e to one three left uh, by the Markov property. Probably three quarters we go over to state two. Uh, I guess we can we can rearrange that if we want by taking the uh, all the eaters over to one side and putting the one on the other side. That would be uh, three quarters e to one three minus three quarters e to two three equals one, wouldn't it? Uh, similarly for eta 2, 3, because we're going to need to find all the hitting times to 3. Uh, again, it's 1 for the time period we have now. Uh, and then this has a probability of a quarter of going back to 1. And a probability 3 quarters of going over to 3. And eta 3, 3. Ah, expected time to hit 3, given we're at 3. We're already there. That's not going to take any time at all. That's naught. So in fact, uh, we can get rid of that term there. That's naught. And again, if we rearrange this second term uh, to put everything on the same side, uh, just to take that e to 1, 3 over. So we've basically got ourselves there two simultaneous equations on the right-hand side, which we have to solve. Uh, you can probably solve simultaneous equations yourself. Uh, I'll call that one equation one, that one equation two, and I'll take uh, three quarters of equation uh, one. And I'll add it. Sorry, I'll take three quarters of equation two. Excuse me. Just a single lot of equation one. And three quarters of equation two because uh, that will cancel out my eta 2, 3. Sorry, I've got a typo there. That should be eta 2, 3 over there. Uh, and that will give me... Uh, how many lots of eta 1, 3 do I have? I have 3 quarters minus 3 sixteenths. Uh, it's 9 six, uh, nine sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths. No, 12 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths equals 9 sixteenths. Now, I've done that all in, in one step. If you want to take two, two or three steps over it, that's fine. Lots of e to 1, 3, and I set this up so that my e to 2, 3s would cancel. And that's equal to uh, 1 plus 3 quarters, which equals 7 quarters. Uh, or in another term, 28 sixteenths. So I guess I get e to 1, 3 equals 28 over 9, which is a bit bigger than 3. Ah. Uh, I went through that perhaps more briefly and brusquely than I ought to have done. It's perfectly fine to take four or five lines of equations to solve your simultaneous equations, but you probably don't need me to make a video of solving simultaneous equations for you, because we've all been doing those since we were in junior school. Uh, so again, that was the same procedure, right? We set up equations by conditioning on the first step, and then we solve those simultaneous equations. Again, I recommend you do it like this, but if you do want a general formula, I don't recommend using it. But we can probably work out what it's going to be, isn't it? E to i a 
is, well, if we're already in A, then the time to hit it is zero. If we're not already in A, then we need to condition on the first step, and we have one plus, because we always have to remember the step that we take now when doing hitting times. And then we condition by doing a sum over J, P, I, J, and then it's the time to hit from there, E to J, A. So I guess that is the general uh, equation if you need it. And again, uh, if there's multiple solutions, you take the smallest non-negative one if you feel you need to. So that's hitting times. Condition on the first step, solve some equations. You already know how to do it because we did it for the gambler's row.